Thank you so much for joining us today. I pray that our time together will help you experience Jesus and to share His grace. This week, we're continuing our series on faith. We're looking at the life of Abraham. We're in Genesis chapter 18 and a little bit of 19 today. So go ahead and be turning in your Bibles while I tell you a little story. This week, I have to admit, I had a bad attitude. I had some things to get accomplished around the house, and I just started to grumble and complain. I just started to fuss, and my son overheard me. And he saw an opportunity. And so as I was complaining about all the things that I had to do, he came up to me and said, Dad, you know, you can't always get what you want. I busted out laughing because that's the exact phrase that I use on him when he's frustrated, when he's trying to put the Legos together and it's not working, when he's trying to clean up his room and then the toys come crashing in on him, when there's something that just doesn't go the way he wants. It's very common to hear in my house this refrain, you can't always get what you want. And so my kids have come to hear that song and and to dread it because they know that I'm trying to tell them, stop complaining. Get done. Don't worry. Don't, Don't stress out. Life is not always about getting what you want. And so in this moment, my son uses my own words against me. He uses the song that I sing to him to sing to me. And I was so proud. I was so proud that he caught me and he held me accountable and he was able to use my own words against me. What we see in Abraham in Genesis chapter 18 is is something that God is proud of. Because in Genesis chapter 18, we see how far Abraham has come. Now remember, Abraham is a man who avoids conflict. He's he's someone who just wants to kind of avoid conflict at all costs. He just wants to sweep things under the rugs. He, He doesn't really want to step into places where it's uncomfortable. But in Genesis chapter 18, we see this amazing situation unfold. Let's read Genesis chapter 18, verses 1 through, let's say verses 5 through 6. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre. And he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran, the t- he ran from the tent entrance to meet them. He bowed down to the ground and said, My Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass on by your servant. A little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. And let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves. And after that, you may pass on. And so they said, Do as you have said. And we're going to stop right there. What I think is fascinating about this passage here is Abraham is just chilling out in his tent trying to catch the cool breeze in a hot day and he sees these three figures in the distance and so he hops right into action. We really see the servant heart of Abraham in this passage because we're not told that Abraham recognizes that it's the Lord yet. We just see Abram rolling out the red carpet. He is such a hospitable person. He goes and says, hey, come on in, rest yourself, let's wash those feet, let's get you something to drink, let's, let's, let's cook for you, let's get you a meal before you go on. I don't want to hold you back, I just want to bless you. And it's amazing that Abraham does this without thinking, this is just secondhand nature to him. And so what he does is he welcomes the stranger, he welcomes the foreigner, and he is willing to, to, to feed them. And to to serve them, to wash their feet. And, And Abraham later finds out that, yes, it is the Lord as he reveals himself to Abraham as he talks about Sarah. I want you to think about this passage in Hebrews as it says, Sometimes we entertain angels unaware. Many times as I read that from the Hebrews writer, I can just see Abram serving the Lord. And not really thinking anything about it. He's just serving people like he normally would. And then the Lord appears to him in the midst of these strangers. 
It sounds an awful lot like when Jesus says, As you do unto the least of these my brothers, you do unto me. You see, God likes to show up in places and just want to see how we react. And so Abram passes the hospitality test with flying colors. And I want you to think about this. This is the heart of faith. This is faith in action, is loving your neighbor as yourself, Jesus says. It's not about how many likes you get on Facebook. It's not how you really stick it to them in the comment section. It's about loving your neighbor. It's seeing the image of Christ in those people that are around you. It's being willing to, to be hospitable, to share of your time and your wealth and your treasures. It's about being willing to humble yourself to serve. Abram is willing to do all of these things. Abraham has passed the hospitality test. He has entertained strangers. And it is the Lord. And so the Lord reveals himself to Abraham and says, So where's Sarah? And the Lord says, I'm going to come back in, in the right season, in the right time, about this time next year, and you're going to be pregnant. Sarah, of course, overhears this, and she just busts out laughing. If you remember, that's exactly the same effect that when God announced it to Abraham, that he had. He laughed, said, are you crazy? This is insane. And so she laughs. But you see, Sarah kind of doesn't pass the honesty test. So, so when she's asked about it, she's like, no, I didn't laugh. No, I wouldn't do that. But she laughs. And so you have this situation where God is revealing his blessings to Abraham and Sarah. And, and they're about to go on their way. And Abram is kind of, Abraham is kind of walking them out towards their destination. And, and the Lord says amongst themselves, saying, Should we kind of tell Abraham what's going on? You know, kind of like a friend when you're having a conversation and they're trying to, I don't know if I should tell you this or not, but this is kind of some of the things that's going on in my life. And so God reveals to Abraham, says, You know, I've blessed you, you're, you're, a, you're a person of our own heart, you, you have a heart for the foreigner, you have a heart for the stranger. I think we need to tell you what we're about to do. You see, Sodom and Gomorrah, you know all about them, you've dealt with them in the past, you had that run-in with the king of Sodom. You see, we've heard the cries, and we're going to go check it out and see if the stories we hear are true. So God is going into Sodom to see if the reports of their lack of hospitality, where Abraham had flourished, Sodom has failed miserably. They're taking advantage of one another. They're, they're forcing themselves upon one another. There's this sense of just evilness and this lack of care and concern for their neighbor. The Old Testament tells us that the sin of Sodom is holding out for the poor and oppressing the poor. They, they're not treating one another as God intended. And so God Himself says, I must go down and check this out and see how this is going. And God tells Abraham, this is what's going to happen. We're probably going to go and destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And then Abraham does this amazing thing. Abraham, the man who avoids conflict, the man who never wants to ruffle any feathers, has the audacity and the power to step in and intercede for Sodom. And he says, Lord, you know, please don't be mad, but are you going to destroy the righteous along with the wicked? You're, you're a just God. Abraham knows that he lives and he serves a just God. And so he says, Lord, if, if there be 50 people in Sodom and Gomorrah, will you please not destroy them? And so the Lord relents and the Lord says, Abraham, sure. If there's 50 righteous, I will be glad to save the cities. And Abraham's not done. Abraham goes, but Lord, you know, please don't be mad. 
if there's 45 people, would you destroy the city for the sake of those five people? And the Lord relents. He's merciful. He shows mercy. And Abraham imposes himself again and says, what about for 30? What about for 20? What about for 10 people? Abraham knows the evilness of Sodom and Gomorrah. Abraham knows their reputation. He knows the way that they do life. But yet you see, Abraham is willing to step in as a mediator for these foul people because he recognizes the value of loving your neighbor. And so God says, Abraham, because of you, if there is ten people, I will not destroy the city. I want you to just to let your mind just marinate in that moment. This Abraham, who lied, had his wife lied, said, you're my sister as they go into Egypt. This man who's always trying to avoid conflict like with him and Lot and their, sh their shepherding staff as they're fighting. He didn't want there to be conflict. So he says, all right, Lot, you just, you just go. You pick. Abram is willing to stand up to the God who continuously shows mercy and compassion towards him. And he shows compassion and mercy towards the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. Now I want you to recognize that in Genesis chapter 19, Lot is at the city gate of Sodom and he sees the strangers coming into town. And much like Abraham, he jumps into action. He's very hospitable. He goes, he, he offers them something to drink. He, he, he makes them something to eat. He offers to, to wash their feet and he invites them into their house. But what we see in Sodom is not the same thing that happens right there by the Oaks of Mamre. For the people of Sodom have turned their, their face against one another, towards outsiders, they're rejecting outsiders, they're wanting to force themselves upon them and do horrible things to them. And Lot extends great hospitality, but in fact he even offers up his own daughters. He sacrifices his own daughters, he's willing to give his own daughters to, to allay this crazy, evil mob. But you see, God, the messengers of the Lord, is willing to, to step in and deliver Lot and his family from this evil place that they had been hanging out. You see, we have always portrayed Sodom and Gomorrah as the worst place ever because God destroyed it and judged it. And I'm wondering, what would happen if God were to say, okay, because of the lack of hospitality, because of the lack of loving our neighbors, the lack of the way we treat foreigners, what would He say to us? Would we be willing to be the ten faithful? You see, God could not find in Sodom ten faithful people, therefore He had to destroy it. And because he was faithful and merciful to Abraham, he delivered Lot's family. And Lot was reluctant. But once he saw the deliverance of the Lord, Lot's tune changed. I want us to think about these things because I think it's interesting for us as our faith begins to grow. A lot of times we think about our faith growing in ways that we, we know more Scripture, which is really important because we need to know the mind of God. We need to know the person of the Spirit. We need to, to know what Jesus would do in situations. But I think we also need to, to see how is it that Abram behaves just naturally? What is his character? God has shown him his character and how Abraham has now adjusted his life to that of God's life. Does someone who sees us, do they see God? 
Do we behave in a way that glorifies God, or do we live a life that only glorifies ourselves? And this is a hard question. I remember a slogan many, many years ago and says, if Christianity were illegal, would there be enough evidence to convict you? You see, when our hearts recognize that God is merciful and God is just, and we see how great He is to us, we can't help but be conformed into His image, to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. As we as Jesus followers have the gift of the Holy Spirit and, and the comfort of the Word of God to be able to be changed, not from what we used to be, but to what God has called us to be. I want you to think about these things. Are you receiving God the way Abraham did? Or are you receiving God the way Sodom and Gomorrah did? For you see that God honored Abraham because of the promise that he had with him, because he believed and trusted in God. He was willing to love his neighbor well, to look out for the foreigner, to, to, to intercede for the enemy. Yet Sodom often looks like our world today, not hospitable, only looking out to satiate our lusts, and always wanting to reject foreigners. This morning, I'm calling you to, to look at your life and see, are you growing like Abraham? Or have you rejected the goodness of God? I pray that the Spirit will convict you and that the power of the Word will transform you. And then if you would like to follow Jesus more closely, I pray that you'll just reach out to us and let us know how we can help you experience Jesus and to share His grace. Be blessed.